Today I'm gonna graph the sad remains of my 1948 GMC into this 1953 Chevy cab. Actually, if you wanna get all technical, I'm gonna be grafting it into this replacement cowl side, which will eventually end up on here. But that's another story for another day. Now, before you uh, get all hyped up and uh, tell me I'm an idiot and you can buy these panels with the cowl vent already in them, Yes, I am aware of that. The problem is I live in Canada and my supplier uh, doesn't have any of the panels in stock with the cowl vent in them already. So just for the sake of argument, I went on to LMC truck and I priced out one of these panels with the correct hole cut in it. And after taxes, it's $75 US. That's pretty reasonable, right? Well. Then you get into shipping. The cheapest shipping option to Canada is just over $200 US. And then you add the exchange rate and this panel with the correct cutout in it from LMC truck would cost me $400 Canadian by the time it got here. Again, for reference, this panel cost me $110 Canadian. So there is absolutely no way I'm spending an extra $300 to get a panel with this in it when I can just cut this out and weld it into here. Be fair, I, I don't have any issues with LMC. I have had to buy from them in the past and never had an issue as far as that, but uh, just shipping alone from the States plus the exchange rate, things cost a fortune here in Canada. So hopefully that explains to some of you why us Canadians do things the way that we do. Anyways, what we're doing here doesn't necessarily have to be vehicle specific. Cutting something out and grafting it into another panel, well, uh, that's something you can do on just about any vehicle. So hopefully there will be some useful information here or useless information or whatever. And you're not completely wasting your time by watching this. Uh, if you are, then I apologize. I got this here clamped into the inside of the new panel. The reason I clamped it on the inside is so that it will lay flat on here. Obviously, if I clamp it to the outside, well, it, it, it's impossible to get it to lay flat because it's got this raised thingy on it. So we put it on the inside here, and when I cut this out, I tried to cut it as close to the outer edges as possible, even though that's not where I'm going to be welding it. The reason I did that is just to give me a reference point of how it's supposed to fit into here. Ideally, I should have taken more out so that it actually had the actual folded edge in it and then it would have been even more accurate. But I, uh, believe it or not, I still have some kind of a plan for the remains of that cab. So I don't want to cut anything out that I don't have to. Anyways, got this in here and then I did some measuring and things like that. And this is kind of tricky because it's kind of an odd shape. Like you would think this and this would be parallel to this door edge, but it's actually not. It's actually just like a weird shape in here. It's kind of its own entity. The distance is different from top to bottom. So like, I don't know, oh wait, I know what this is. What this is? This is a Saskatchewan vent. Probably the Saskatchewan right there. That is where they got the idea from. Look at that. Nature's perfect shape. I got sidetracked again. Big surprise there. So, now I don't want to section it in the way I've got it cut out. Like I said, I only cut it out that way so that I have a point of reference for grafting it into here. What I'm going to do is graft in the least amount of this panel as possible. A couple of reasons for that. One, you can see it's quite pitted and not like ruined. Like that's still very weldable and what have you, but like uh, why would we want to weld garbage when we have fresh clean metal to work with? So this actual trough here, this part is still all good. It, just ignore that. Anyways, so we're only going to want to section it in about a half inch away from this edge. Now I don't want to section it right on this edge because it's kind of a rolled in edge and 
what happens is if you try and splice stuff in like super close to an edge or body line, the heat from the welding, even if you're careful, it can start causing that edge to do weird things, which it's easy to bodywork a flat area and get that flat. But once you start doing weird stuff with a body line stuff or an edge or whatever, like that, to, that takes some sculpting or metal work. If you try and hammer that out straight again, it's a lot harder to get straight than, than a, a flatter area. But on the same note, these edges or body lines do create an area of strength in the panel, which helps to reduce any kind of distortion from welding. So as a general rule, I try to go at least half inch away from that edge. That gives me the benefit of the strength of the edge without actually doing damage to the edge from welding. So about inch, three quarters of an inch to half inch is kind of your playing field there. In this case, we're probably gonna try and go about half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. Don't have a lot here because this is fairly close to here on the track when I cut it off. So yeah, we'll probably go with half inch. But anyways, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scribe all the way around here. I'm gonna scribe a line into this panel with is the shape of this. Then I'm gonna cut this panel to the actual dimensions that are needed. And when I do that, then I can lay it back on. I'll have my point of reference by this scribe line. I can lay it back on the inside and I can scribe all the way around it and then I can cut it out and then section it in here. We got our line scribed, our new point of reference. I get this little guy all trimmed and cleaned up around the edges. So now what I can do is just lay it back into position on the inside, align it with my scribe line. And when I'm satisfied with it, I clamp it into place. I'm gonna take my scribe and by scribe, I mean old screwdriver. You thought you were watching a professional bodywork channel. Uh, you're in the wrong place, buddy. As you can see, I now have a perfect line to cut to. Now I wanna to cut to the inside of this line, obviously, not the outside, because if I cut to the outside, then I'm gonna have the thickness of my grinding disc, and there's gonna be a huge gap. The idea behind doing this is that we're going to get a nice fitment when we're done. So I got that uh, trimmed out as you saw, a little bit of filing on the edge just to true it all up and then it just drops right in. If you remember back to kindergarten when you were just tracing stuff out and you had to cut right on the line with the scissors, well this is the same thing. Remember how good it felt uh, when you finally graduated from doing the paper and then they let you play with the angle grinders and, uh, and the sawzalls and everything? Apparently they don't let you do that in school anymore. but. Uh, was back before safety was a big thing so now i'm just tack welding in the panel nothing uh, too earth shattering here all i'm doing is tack welding it about every inch or so and i'm just kind of fiddling with it and working the panel as i go to make sure everything stays in alignment i want both uh, edges of the metal to be flush with each other or as close as flush to possible so i don't have a weird ledge or anything we'll discuss what i mean by that uh, in detail a bit later so I tack welded this in about every inch or so. And if you look here, for the most part, we have a very nice fitment all the way around. Little fat here, not a big deal. But overall, almost perfect fit. Again, a little bit here, again, not a big deal. I wouldn't hesitate to take weld this if I wanted to, but we're just gonna be MIG welding this. But all I did, 
as you saw as I scribed around then I cut directly to that scribe line tuned it up a little bit with the file just to uh, take off any inconsistencies and then it drops right in we're able to go around here tack it in place very nice fitment that's not going to give us any trouble when we go to weld this is the secret here fitment you could be the best welder in the world you have the best equipment but if you try and weld something and it's got a big gap here half inch gap here quarter inch gap there tight gap there big gap here and it's just a just a mess you're gonna have more trouble trying to weld it it's it's never gonna look as nice it's gonna take more time to weld more time to grind you're gonna use more materials it's gonna need more body work to finish out you think about all that extra extra time and materials that it takes to finish something out when you can get a nice fitment right off the bat and eliminate the need for all of that so the key to getting your welds to come out nicely is to weld consistently well how do you weld consistently well with tig welder it takes a little bit more practice but with mig welding all you're doing is literally pulling the trigger so if you have a nice fitment when you're mig welding then literally there's no brain work involved at all by the time you get to welding you're just standing there pulling a trigger there's nothing else going on the goal on this panel isn't to metal finish it out all perfectly that's just not what we're doing on this panel that's not what we're doing on this truck the goal with this is to just reduce the amount of finishing time needed you see i ground down all the tack welds and for the most part everything fits up nice right here you can see there's still weld on this side and not weld on this side anyways it's uh, very tempting to just uh, take your grinder and keep grinding until all this is flush and then you can take pictures for Instagram and like uh, tell your friends it's metal finished and whatever well that is uh, the worst thing you can do when you see this not a big deal but this tells you that this this piece here is higher than this piece so when you see this stop because this is only tack welded i can actually correct this now the only reason i'm going to fix it now is it just makes it easier to grind it and clean it up this isn't a big deal this will this is easy to body work out but you know if, if if you have this, it's always tempting to just take the grinder and just grind that little bit extra out, get it flat so it looks all nice. But all you're doing by doing that is grinding the higher edge thin, which is totally counterproductive. And you're not metal finishing it because it still needs filler. And all you did is you just ground, now you've, what you've done is you've ground a trough into here. You've ground this low. So now it actually needs more filler, plus it, the metal is thin. So I got full access to the backside, so this is a super easy fix at this stage. All I gotta do, flip it over, a couple taps with the hammer where the tack weld is, pull the dolly on the outside. Anyways, now we're, we're flush. Both planes of the metal are flush. All I did was go on the inside and where the weld was, just knock that area up while holding a dolly kind of over here. I'm just using a flat dolly in this case. And that just brought it up. Now they're both flush. In this case, all we're really doing is just making it easier to get a consistent grind. And we're reducing that temptation to just grind it just that little extra bit, just so it's all smooth. We don't want to do that and we're just grinding metal off all we're doing is trying to grind the weld off now if i had waited to try and do this after it was fully welded you can't really do that with the uh, mig weld the mig weld is so hard it just it, it doesn't have that extra little bit of malleability that you need to do that if that was a tig weld i could have corrected it after although i still try to get things as close as i can when i'm tig welding but you know stuff happens stuff moves around so I'm just speeding up this part because I have several videos on the channel of welding already and we don't want to get too repetitious. 
But all I'm doing here is I'm doing three tacks at a time and then immediately grinding it and then going back and doing three tacks at a time and just working my way all the way around the panel. I have a video on this. It's called, is there a faster, easier way to MIG weld thin sheet metal? So if you'd like to know more, you can watch that video. Or I have another earlier video called MIG welding a cracked classic car fender. And if you want to see a different technique on MIG welding, you can watch that video. Uh, both techniques uh, work quite well for me over the years and uh, both produce similar results. This way I'm doing right now is uh, just considerably faster and uh, works, uh, I find it, sometimes it works even better than the other technique I use. So you can use uh, whatever uh, works best for you, I guess. The other technique I use is I do three tacks at a time, let it completely cool, do another three tacks and just work around the whole panel like that, then grind it when I'm all done. So it's a lot slower. But uh, if you're new to this, it's a little easier to see what's happening to the metal as you're welding it. Well, I got this all welded in, and uh, boy, that looks sharp, don't it? Didn't even warp on us, eh? Then I put a straight edge on it, and uh, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. It's uh, all pulled in. Fair bit. Well, not catastrophically, but you can see the daylight through there. That's not supposed to be like that. This is caused by two things in this case. First of all, anytime you weld something, the weld will shrink. Doesn't matter how careful you are, what you do, the weld will always shrink no matter what. Now you can minimize that, but it's always going to happen. It, anybody who tells you otherwise is uh, just lying to you. I thought the same thing when I first started out as I could just weld something in and if I was really really careful and I stood on one foot and held my teeth just right I would uh, be able to weld something in and it, it would never move around and like something like this I'd spend like a whole day welding it in and you know doing like the whole one tack at a time whatever and it'd still still move around on me and I, I would always be uh, very sad. Second reason for this occurrence is if we look here and you see there's still a weld showing there. That's because this area is low, lower than the surrounding metal. So as soon as when I was grinding this and the grinder started to touch the metal around it, I knew I had to stop because if I would have kept grinding, then I would have ground the surrounding metal thin and just dug a hole here. But the reason this is low is because this area was all low before and this is a lead seam here. So when I cut this out of the uh, donor vehicle, this was all sculpted out of lead. They had just spot welded it here and then hammered it down at the factory and then lead it over it. So this damage was already there. And what I've done is I've welded this damage into this panel now. So it's lower here than everywhere else. If the panel isn't exactly the right shape before you weld it in, welding it in isn't gonna magically make it better. It's gonna make it worse. Anyways, if this was just a regular patch, we could just go right to filler, no problem. It's basically like just over a sixteenth inch of filler, so like that's you get it in one coat and it would be totally fine. Totally acceptable repair. However, in this case, we have this edge all the way around here. And so if I just go and fill across this and get this straight, then I'm gonna have to go back and I'm gonna have to bodywork this edge into it and try and fake it out. And uh, that's just, that's not really ideal. And this is a really easy fix to correct this and get it back to the correct shape. We're, again, we're not going for a metal finish, but we want our edge, at the very least, we want our edge to be, you know, on the correct plane so that we're not trying to fake it out with bodywork. Trying to, you know, bodywork a flat area, that's easy. You put the filler on, you sand it until it's all straight and you're fine, but if you start coming into body lines or edges and you start trying to fake that, that's a whole bunch of sculpting and, and work that you don't really want to get involved with. So it's a lot easier just to uh, fix it in the metal stage. Anyways, as I said, the majority of this damage is caused by the weld area shrinking. So how do we correct that? Well, we correct it by stretching the weld back into shape. And we can stretch it by using an on-dolly technique that's where I'm hammering onto, directly onto the dolly and I'm squishing that weld. And by squishing it, I'm causing it to stretch out. And that's gonna bring this all back into shape. There's 
a couple different ways I can accomplish this. I could hold a, uh, a crown dolly on the inside of the panel and force it up. I can hammer directly on it and that would stretch it and bring it up. However, in this case, the panel is off the vehicle. So it's very hard to force upwards while it's all loose like this. So instead, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna hammer on the inside directly onto the flat of this dolly here. sound that's the sound of the hammer hitting directly on the dolly and therefore you know that you're stretching the weld So less than five minutes and we've already dramatically brought this up. However, if you look in this corner here, right here, you see there's still some daylight showing through. So I know I need to concentrate a bit more through here because even though there is, when these are stamped into the factory, they do have a bit of a wallop in them. I want this to have a little more crown to it and while we're here we might as well fix that we don't want again to be sculpting this edge out of anything so I'm gonna concentrate through here a bit more try to bring that up and just kind of give it one more once over here and then we should be uh, good to go
that's as far as I'm gonna take that. We put our straight edge, put our straight edge on here, and you can see where the low spot is gone. No longer any daylight showing through, and there is a very slight amount of crown like this, which is kind of what we were after. This is uh, just kind of a dance of uh, finding the right balance. Like I said, uh, whenever the stuff like this is stamped into a panel, you even see it on modern cars, whether it's a hole for uh, a side marker light or a door handle or whatever, there's always a bit of a weird wow in the panel. So what I'm trying to do is just find the balance. I don't want to make this thing bulge out too far because then it's going to have a weird shape in it that way and then you, you got to try and bodywork it into the rest of the panel. So I'm trying to find the right balance where it has some crown, but not too much. And I don't want it dished in like this, obviously, like it was. So I think we kind of found that balance where it's within the tolerance of being able to be bodyworked. I also worked this corner up a little bit where it was low. That was an easy fix. I just used the chisel end of my hammer and held the dolly on the outside and just uh, tapped it up. There wasn't enough room to get my hammer head in there, so I had to use the chisel end. And I just brought that up and that's all uh, within range now. Again, this all has to be bodyworked anyways because there's a lead seam here, but the goal is just to get this in without making a total mess. Now we got the situation of this here. Now this isn't uh, rust holes. What happened here is the side vent hinge mechanism seized up in about 1962. And then uh, about 25 years later, Indianapolis Jones comes along and he's uh, on a quest for the lost treasure of Burma. So he uh, comes along here and he takes his uh, Sticks his pry bar in to break open the crypt there. And obviously this thing's seized up. So uh, what happens is it uh, shears right off here, right at the factory spot welds. And we're left with all these holes. So what I got to do now is I got to work at this, get this freed up. Once we get that freed up, then I'm going to have to weld the, uh, the hinge back on. So that'll be a fun little task. Now you may think I'm trying to overly dramatize that just to get the old YouTube views and stuff but uh, now I can guarantee you that's exactly what happened because uh, I was there. There you go there's our completed uh, graft. The door opens and closes now and it actually even fits fairly decent considering how mangled this thing was. And keep in mind that there is a, uh, well, we still have to weld it on the truck. And there's also supposed to be a cute little seal that fits into this trough here. We got this all freed up and working again, as it should. I was actually pretty surprised. Even the springs are still good. Anyways, I realized there's probably about 0% of you who are actually going to be welding in one of these vents. If anything, you probably want to shave it. And personally, I prefer the look of the smooth cowl on the later trucks, the 51 through 54 trucks. To me, that uh, looks better. So why did I do this? Well, one, uh, that's what the truck originally had. And two, I literally just felt like doing it. I know you're supposed to be able to justify everything you do on the internet, but uh, literally, this, I just felt like doing this. So. We did it. And now the truck has the appearance of an earlier truck, which is what we were going for. And for the rest of you, I hope you uh, picked up a few tips on how to deal with uh, MIG weld, if it warps on you, and uh, how to correct that easily. As you saw, it didn't take very much to get this back into shape. Uh, and it's something you can do with uh, hand tools, as you saw. And uh, again, uh, if we didn't have this vent in here with this edge, and it had warped the way it did, uh, that small amount would have been perfectly acceptable for filler, but because we have this edge here, I didn't want to be trying to fake that out with uh, body filler, so, you know, a couple minutes and we had it back straight again, and it's uh, good for another 70 years. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and uh, I just, I can't believe the uh, response so far on this GMC project has been overwhelmingly positive, uh, so, you know, you put anything out on the internet, you're always expecting to get slammed. But uh, for whatever reason, I just seem to have a really great audience. 
uh, like the worst guy in the world just seems to attract the best kind of people to watch him I guess so don't know how that works uh, but we've been getting a great response and a ton of support so thanks to all of you and uh, welcome to any new viewers or whatever uh, hopefully you aren't completely put off by by what we got going on here and uh, you'll stick around but if not that's okay too I don't uh, want to force anyone to watch against their will if, uh, if you are being forced to watch against your will, uh, please reach out and we'll uh, send someone out to help you out. Anyways, if you like, uh, you can tune in next time and uh, there's uh, guaranteed to be a whole bunch of rust and welding and grinding and possibly some dents and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, thanks again and I uh, hope to see you back on the next one.